So the grain sector in Maine has always been a really important part of the whole agricultural scene. It's a storied history. If you went back to the mid-1800s, we had you know, many, many acres of land being grown, grains being grown for human-grade consumption. And we had thousands of small mills that dotted the countryside. And over time, we lost a lot of that, that culture that was associated with grain growing. What's changed in the last 10 years or so is that there are new markets uh, evolving for higher value grains. And so we have uh, new local markets for um, barley for malting, for bread flour, uh, for cereal, for oats, and we have organic grain markets as well. Yeah, we're in the middle of the Maine Artisan Bread Fair. It's a celebration of all things real bread. Comes out good. Excellent. Hot pizza coming through. This is Maine Coast Focaccia. It's made with uh, Maine uh, whole wheat flour and Maine rye flour. Oh, yeah. And it also has seaweed in it. Yes, that's what I That's the yeah. Oh, okay. See? Yes. Love that. So um, I started looking for local wheat 20 years ago, and I went to a, a meeting with dairy farmers, and Matt was there. They were looking for uh, a main wheat for their bread. And the dairy farmers thought it was crazy, but Matt was like, we can do this, so. Since it was already my job to promote markets and doing things like that, I said, yeah. Matt was a perfect person in terms of experience, his farming experience, his grain experience, his willingness to take on something new. And here we are 20 years later with fields and fields of Maine grown wheat and all sorts of people using it. One of the most important things I think we do with Cooperative Extension and the University of Maine is to take risks for people when it might be disastrous for them to take risks. So for instance, we do a lot of variety trialing. And for us to be able to just try all sorts of varieties, and some are complete stinkers, and if, some, if a farmer had, had grown that uh, to try it and had you know, a few acres of, of a complete stinker, then they've just lost a bunch of money. But we can do it in a way that provides them with the critical information they need. I'm working with a computer model, looking at field data, and we're going to try and calibrate the model to our region. And then what the model does is it takes those climate trends that it's observed in past data, and then it also has a lot of uh, mechanisms to look at futuristic trends. Uh, we can manipulate it as much as we want with carbon or precipitation or temperature. And then we'll use the calibrated model to try and simulate for future scenarios that allows us to really predict the future with confidence. Uh, and we kind of need that right now. It's the fun part about my job is that, uh, especially when we're doing on-farm trials, you get to know these farmers and they come to rely on you, you know, uh, for a lot of information, not just about specifically what we're looking at in the trial. Right now we're currently farming 300 acres, but the goal is to get up to 1,000 acres. You need scale with grain. Businesses uh, is really starting to become devoted to local grain. I mean, Allagash just pledged to buy a million pounds of fan-grown grains for their beer by 2021. We're part of that. We grow oats. We're in two of their national releases already. I'm most excited by the locality, you know, getting people interested in sourcing local grains. It's an exciting market and it's a lot better premium. And I think that is probably where we're going to see, hopefully, growth. It's a great feeling to know that the work we do directly impacts farmers and processors and end users. Then the other part, I just, I love when I find that because of something that we've done, we've created an opportunity to connect people and those connections have led to maybe an increase in sales or a better production practice or a new market that's developed. Um, those have been really uh, very satisfying moments. <laughs>